Hi, I'm Ulla. I'm a research scientist and a spiritual scientist. I'm here to unite the head and the heart. Today's video is called What are soul exit points? More specifically, do souls choose the timing of death? When we hear about someone's death, we may think, oh, they shouldn't have died, at least not so young, not so tragically, or suddenly, or whatever the case may be. Most people find it hard to believe that our births and deaths are carefully orchestrated events at the soul level. There are no such things as accidents, even when it comes to mass deaths in earthquakes, tsunamis, wars, and so on. The soul leaves exactly when it wants to, when it doesn't have anything else to do in that particular lifetime and setting. How is that possible? Well, before coming here, our souls have made a life plan. The life plan includes three to five exit points in case the going gets too tough or we decide we've learned enough for this lifetime. Who makes that decision? Not your ego or human personality. The soul chooses if and when to leave early. All is choice at the soul level. These exit points are carefully planned so that they are spread out over our lifetime. The first exit could happen when the soul is still in the mother's womb or a baby. It would be seen as a miscarriage, premature birth, stillbirth, crib death or childhood death up until the age of seven. The second exit point may occur between 8 to 21 years. The third exit is between 22 and 42 years. And the fourth exit can happen any time from midlife to 70 years of age. There may be a fifth exit point after age 70, but before the body goes through its natural death process. Every time we bypass one of these exit points, they expire. If we bypass all of them, then we have to live out until the end of the life, for as long as the body lasts. In hindsight, most of us recognize some events in our lives that could have been potential exit points, like some stupid stunt we pulled in our youth, or a surgery with complications, or a heart attack, or some other life-threatening illness that we survived. The soul can leave at these exit points without any karma. It's like getting a get out of earth free card and it's karma free. Why? Because the exit was planned with the other souls in that person's life. All their interactions from that point on come to a natural end. This is very different from a suicide, which is not a planned event. It throws everybody else's plans out the window. Suicide creates a big mess and an evolutionary debt to all those other souls affected by it. Do souls choose the manner of death? Yes, the how to exit is also planned at the soul level. It's usually by illness, accident, murder, poisoning or sudden organ failure. For example, it could be getting cancer or a stroke, getting shot, being in a car crash or a plane crash, drowning, accident at sea and so on or we could live to old age and die of some chronic disease or organ failure. The thing is, if cancer, for instance, is the soul's planned exit strategy, the person may undergo treatment and go into remission for a while. But eventually the same or another cancer will come back because it is the planned exit strategy. Sometimes the person or their relatives may blame themselves, the doctors or others for not saving the person's life without realizing that it was the soul's chosen way to leave. We have to accept that. What happens in senile dementia or Alzheimer's disease? These are just other ways for the soul to leave, but in a gradual way. The person has probably finished their life plan or what it came here to do and the soul wants to leave. But they may feel a duty to stay for the family for some reason. They start to get problems with their memory because the ego starts to move and the memories go with it. The person isn't all there because their consciousness or sentience is mostly gone to the energetic side, but we can still communicate with them. When the person is surrounded by his regular caretakers or spouse, the soul drifts out of the body because the regulars become part of the background. 
but when a new person comes to visit, part of the soul comes back to the body to be with them. They may talk about things for a while until they start to become part of the background too, so the soul drifts out again. What are we to do? We can give the person permission to go back home or to their higher self. Tell them they don't need to hang around for us. They're free to detach from the human body and go back to the energetic side, where the bulk of their soul exists already. When someone lingers in a coma, the body is kept alive by mostly medical and mechanical means, and only a very small percentage of the soul's sentience is present. But the person doesn't want to let go of physicality. Their ego is trying hard to stay incarnate, because it will dissolve when the body dies. But you should know that nothing is lost when you die, not even your human personality. Why? Because everything is kept and assimilated by your soul and higher self. That includes your temporary human personality, which becomes a drop in the ocean of your soul's personality that has thousands of lifetimes in its experiential database. Nevertheless, the you here is a unique expression of your soul, projected into a human body with a particular energy signature that will never be reproduced in other lifetimes by you or any other entity. What's the take-home message here? Incarnation is a great privilege. There's a large queue of souls waiting to come to Earth, so let's make the most of our time here on this exquisitely beautiful and biodiverse planet. Let's keep it that way for future generations, because that includes our future selves. As Neil Walsh said, who you are is an individuation of divinity. Why you are here is to demonstrate it. I want to acknowledge Guy Needler for bringing us this brand new understanding of soul exit points. For more information, please go to my website at bigpicturequestions.com or read my book, which has a lot more information about the afterlife. Pretty much everything you wanted to know about death and dying, but we're afraid to ask. Let's spread the word to others. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, give me a thumbs up and share it with others. Thank you for watching and uniting your head with your spiritual heart.